the the theme was fairies, like. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cute. Okay. Hello, everyone. Are we live already? I think so. Yeah, and if she was on the replay too, as well. Yeah, I was gonna say for the replay people. Hello. Hi. Oh yeah. my God, Monica. Where is Kate Middleton? Girl, I was in that rabbit hole last night too. Oh, I didn't even see that. My sister said they're having like a press conference soon. About that? Like the royals are going to have some conference thing to talk about. There's like crazy conspiracies about where Kate Middleton is. Wow. I'm like, I don't know. I'm in the camp, but just like leave her alone. Like, well, what if something's really wrong? Like, where is she? Well, that too, but like also like if there's like medical stuff, I'm like, do we need to know like as just average regular people, you know? Do if they're forcing her to give her kidney to true. <laughs> if it's that, yeah, if it's that wild, then like if she needs help. <laughs> My thing is, is I do not like the royals, so I was just more so interested in people's crazy conspiracy theories, but I don't yeah. actually like the royals. Yeah, yeah. But like it's scary because of I watched the documentary of um Harry and Megan, and Megan was like, it was literally oh horrible and i'm like i just hope she's okay that's true um they said it should be happening between now and wednesday okay yeah Hmm. interesting wait the king stepping aside for health Hmm. reasons they made that oh Oh my god monica stop (laughs) yeah no that's the one i was about to say too (laughs) what (laughs) oh my god i can't like i hope she's okay (laughs) but oh my (laughs) That's funny. That's funny. Oh, yay. I always love when they have these in the middle of the book. See, I think that they would not have had a big of a controversy if there wasn't that dang photo and the That's other true. photo that was so obviously not her. I'm like, you are trying to cover something up, though. So. It, that is true. That is weird. I mean, oh, sorry, this yes. family is a like... bunch of, like, Nepo babies. It's not that surprising that they're doing shady stuff. Yeah. yeah. So on top of talking about Royal tonight, we're also here to talk about our book club for Mark. That kind of threw me off. I'm so sorry. Yes. I'm <laughs> kind of sad. Kisses by in. Phoebe Khan. But you're sending me four free books. So hello, everybody. Hello. Yeah. Ooh, hello from Australia. Hi. Love it. Hey, Justin. Can't wait to hear your thoughts if you finished it. <laughs> oh, Hi, yes. Linda. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Hey, Cheryl and Kamal. Okay, and everybody, I think we said hi. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this was our, what month are we in? Was this our March? This is our March pick. It was an interesting one because the cover makes it seem, or we thought, yes, the cover was stunning. Um, And we thought this was a pirate romance. We advertised it as a pirate romance last month. (laughs) I am so mad. It was not. It was um, a bathtub book where <laughs> the cover did not match the actual yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't even know how to give the synopsis. So basically, like, it starts when um, California is, like, being added to the United States and they're, like, divvying up the <laughs> land that none of it belongs to them anyways, but they're divvying it up. <laughs> And um, our heroine's uncle is, like, some commissioner or, like, some government official um, who's, like, deciding where the land's going to go. And our hero is, like, nervous that his land's going to be taken from him. So that's basically what this book is. Mm-hmm. Hello. Chris, do you yeah, wanna- I was going to say, should we go around and talk about yeah. our ratings? If you finished it, too, in the comments, like, let us know as well. So I'm going to give it one star. <laughs> so, <laughs> I felt like when I was reading it, I was like, okay, it's going to be, like, a two star. And then I was like, this is a disservice to every book I've given a two star. Like, this is a one star. <laughs> like, honestly. <Damn. laughs> yeah. So we'll get into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, okay. Here's the thing. I started this on Thursday and I got all the way to like the last hundred pages and I was, I could not finish. I was so bored. So I was thinking of DNFing, but I ended up skimming towards the end. So I don't know if we're going to count that as like a full read. Um, I'm going to give it two stars. Yeah, two stars. I, like Justin, was enjoying it in the beginning. I was like, okay, like I see. I really liked how they got together because like she at least had agency. Like she was going after him. I was like, okay, like this, this is different. But I literally could not even force myself to finish. I'm 50 pages from the end. And I was like, I don't care. 
I do not care. And it was a, that's why I don't like a lot of American historicals because they're just, it's boring. I'm like, I don't care about your land. And like you said, it's not even yours to begin with. So why do we even, why are we fighting? <laughs> so, but I yeah. gave it two. I think one is a little, I just, I say one for like, I'm personally. I'm going <laughs> off on books this month. Okay. We are done. <laughs> The two star trash can is full. Theme. Now I'm moving to the one star. <laughs> Have you read a five star yet, Christy? Like full five. Just it was the historical fiction at the very beginning of the month, and it was the Kristen Hanna book, The Women. That's it. I almost bought that. That was me last month. That was me last month. Yeah. I gave a bunch of two stars and one stars last month. Okay. It's been does rough. He even, sorry, he does he have a mustache yeah. in the book? I don't recall. I don't know if it's actually ever described. I yeah. I was waiting for it. Because the Beverly like a Photoshop fail, obsessed. like they got the wrong cover on the wrong book. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Let me see on these. There's even like waves like crashing, like blending in with her dress. I'm like, what is this cover? Yeah. They were in the dusty, musty western for like the rest, the whole book. Which I mean, it started off there on like she starts off, she just got off the boat in San Francisco, but like we skipped that whole ship scene and then they get on boats other times but like we fade away and we catch up to when they're already at their location yeah it wasn't a plot like point. yeah she did talk about like <laughs> wanting him to be a pirate she like dreamed of him being a pirate yeah so maybe yeah. it's like her dream on the cover that <laughs> yeah so other people think it's okay generous of three stars okay <laughs> i agree i agree mm. Yeah. DNF'd. Yeah. And there were so many characters. Like, I think I was tracking like how many, like 25 characters at one point. And I'm like, all these people are like connecting. Everybody's like, this guy's sleeping with this lady, and this lady's yeah. also sleeping with this guy. And I'm like, what is happening? Okay. But wasn't it Harris, the one who was sleeping with that like evil lady? But then he's also like in love with Caitlin, Catherine, someone. And then yeah. they're just going to get married. I was like, but I thought she literally caught you with that other lady in bed and now you don't care like and people fell in love way too quickly in this book like, yeah and then fell in love way too sister, quickly. was pregnant by like half the book yeah. yeah but like she wanted him and she got him like that's what i did like in the beginning she was like i'm gonna flirt with you i really like you we're gonna get together and they did so but, I like why did she like him he was like an asshole in the beginning that's how I think she had like immature thoughts of like, you know, well, she was just like fantasizing about any yeah. guy she saw really and like having these big dreams. So like, I think that's why she like lusted after him in the beginning. But then like him as a person. Yeah, like, there was nothing great. And I feel like he got worse once they went back to his hometown. Mm -hmm. Like oh, he yeah. totally changed. Like he got wild. It's in it's in California the whole time they start in San Francisco and they go to Monterey where he lives. And so they kind of go back and forth there. But, like, in the beginning, it says, like, oh, we were just on this three-and-a-half-month journey from, like, I think Baltimore to California. But we don't see any of that, Justin. Yeah. And then, but I was thinking, like, is it faster to go by sea to around or across by land? Well, during that time, because it was, like, the 1850s. So, like, through would have been really dangerous. So like, I mean, on ship is obviously dangerous too, but they like yeah. go through the Panama Canal and stuff. And so it was like probably quicker. Cause this is like, isn't this like Oregon Trail type of time, like dangerous yeah. out there or like when everyone later, was going guess, to outlaws and like, yeah. Trains, like jumping on the trains. And yeah. if California is just becoming a state. Would all of that, all of those states right there technically be owned by the US yet? They, they are, they got them when they got California. Like oh, a lot okay, of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time for these not great books this month. <laughs> <Anakins>. <laughs> yeah. But then the whole like they had to get like forced into marriage situation and like because she got pregnant. Pregnant, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, what? It was like felt like everything was thrown into this book. I just feel like the stakes of the romance weren't high. Like in the beginning, they couldn't be together because she was like the the niece of like the land commissioner, and like he was the, she was told not to marry him. But then she got pregnant, so they had to get married. I'm like, there's no stakes for you guys actually not to be together. Well, and then they're both like, oh, I wish I was like, I wish he was in love with me, and he's like, I wish she would love me. But like, none of you are doing anything to like fall in love, you know? Right. 
or doing anything for each other. But I also yeah. think that like her uncle person like wasn't even that big a part of the plot, but like they kept on making it seem like it was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And then her dad like randomly got a bunch of money towards the end. I didn't even know what that plot was about either. So I was like, what is going on? I really felt like this was like a play where like we're seeing all these scenes happen oh. and then they just, it cuts away and we don't see like, like we don't get a sense of like where they are or like these other characters around them. Like it's just like, oh, we start the scene and like there it's the next morning. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see. I kind of okay. got like soap opera vibes yeah. kind of like that where it was just yes. like, oh, here's these people. It's going to be dramatic. But now we're going to cut to these people and this is what they're doing. Now we're going to cut back to these people. And I was just, yes. but it like, wasn't actually dramatic. They yeah. like tried to make it dramatic, but I'm like, it's not because it felt very like disconnected throughout the whole time. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There was no stakes or real reasons as to why they couldn't have been together the whole time. Mm -mm. Yeah. And then he's like a doctor and he didn't realize or think that she might get pregnant the first time they sleep together. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, and then he gets mad at her for like the fact that she was a virgin. Like the first time they were, I was like, dude, what? Like you're already starting to go downhill for me. <laughs> like, right. He felt like she was such, such like a flirt and a tease. That he's yeah. like, wait, like, I thought you were familiar with, like, men. Like, what's happening? Yeah. There was, there wasn't a lot of good review, Goodreads reviews, but someone was, like, he was, like, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And <laughs> it was, because he was, like, so pissed off. But then he was, like, my family's going to love you because you're pregnant with my child. And then they get to his family, and he's an asshole again. So I'm, like, you were just too much, my love. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, they didn't even tell that she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And makes her stay in, like, the house. She's, like, I'm bored. He's, like and <laughs> yeah. when he's like i don't like a few times he told her like i don't want to hear you like talking like about anything like don't bring up yeah. anything like don't talk about the past let's live in the present and also like shut your mouth <laughs> i think at one point he was like because i said so and i was like what the hell <laughs> like, yeah. well have you guys read a uh, phoebe con book before no no and then i was looking her up and it said that she has a pen name so she writes also as cinnamon burke the ones with like the super glittery sparkly covers cinnamon yeah i think you like haven't i've seen them all the time like on step back saturday or like coverless friday books but I'm they're supposedly them. even more bonkers than this but like in a fun way or like a oh my god i can't stand this like way. a wild like futuristic way i think oh oh my god like these the like really pretty like yeah. sparkly ones yeah why did the one i look up yeah, it has yeah. a 2.95 rating on goodreads <laughs> <laughs> that's her so bad. books were wild wild yeah a, a lot mm -hmm. of her books that's why okay so before the live show guys we were saying like we actually don't know how <laughs> we picked this book <laughs> Because I was like, how did we end up picking this one? Because it literally has like 30 Goodreads ratings. <laughs> I think I'm it was sorry. just one we all had in paperback in common. Because I had bought, like, I already own this. This was on my shelves. She also writes under Phoebe, Jane, oh, basically another um, mm. version of Phoebe Con. Well, none of us liked the book, so you DNFing it is totally okay. <laughs> And I will say, Jenny. I liked the beginning. Like, I was like, oh, okay, I can get on board with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All her books seem to be set in America. Well, yeah. there's one that's a Viking one. Oh, is there? Yeah, I have this one. And it has really mm -hmm. good reviews, actually. She has a Native American one that tells me everything I need to know. About okay, I saw that too. Yeah. She was, like, describing yeah. people to look like Native Americans at the beginning of this, and she was yeah. like, daydreaming about it like yeah like, yeah the heroin yeah <clears throat> that's when i started getting in the feelings <laughs> yeah it wasn't so much as it wasn't problematic as the sense that like it did not even discuss the fact like this land was not theirs like it just bypassed that entirely yeah no the only mention of native americans was her saying that someone looked like one and she thought he was hot and yeah. i was like sweet jesus yeah yeah like that was the only part yeah yeah well which then i mean like how... oh go ahead oh no go ahead. go ahead 
Well, I was going to say, how did his family get their land? Because they couldn't have had it for that long. And then he's all mad that they're trying to steal his land. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he was part of it when it was, like, part of Mexico. Like, you know, when Spain kind of owned all that. Which, that was, like, a couple hundred years. But, like, before that, thousands of years. Like, other people have obviously, you know, that was their land that you guys are now fighting over. Yeah. Maybe it just was passed down generationally. Yeah. So, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was I going to say? Oh, like it was interesting, the whole like part of the U.S. government and like trying to steal these people's land and then also like just keep them tied up in legal fees the whole time and like to get it back from them. So I'm like, I don't know, just another crappy part of history. Yeah, but that was like the plot. It's essentially. That, the- yeah, that was the beginning of the plot. History. Yeah. It's like, I get you're trying to be, because I saw she has a note at the end about like, this was actually real and this actually happened. I was like, fair, but it's just like those oil rigs in that other book we read. Like, I don't need like an in-depth plot about this. Like, I don't. Like, give me more romance. That's what I'm reading for. Yeah. Well, and all the romance felt kind of like fade away scenes. Like, we didn't get a lot of descriptions or anything. Like, it just kind of cut away from them. We did, uh, like, for a couple of them that I was very surprised by how descriptive those were. Mm. Oh, that's true. I guess there were just so many with so many different couples that, like, a lot of the ones did cut away. Yeah. It felt like it didn't really, like, flow, though. It was like, this is my obligatory sex scene. Insert here. And then back to talking about the land. (laughs) Yeah. And then the whole, like, squatters of the land coming, and then that's their next enemy of who they're, like, fighting against. (laughs) Like, when they're what? literally <laughs> squatters themselves, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The oil rigs was at least a little more interesting than this one. Oh, yeah, no. that was the bathtub one, right? Yeah, wasn't that the bathtub? I just feel like yeah. in America yes. they're obsessed with the history, and I'm like, <clears> just no. Oh. No, we've gotten some ones that were not said in America. What was the one we like? Me, you, and Lacey read. What was that one? Fires of winter what was that one called we dnf'd it we all hated it and it was told in like dual point of views and it was like repetitive the heroine and the hero scene yes fire mm. it was fire fire of winter or something yeah yeah i literally maybe read like 40 pages and i was like this writing style is insane no that was a lot of information yeah. to be fair also this has nothing to do with the plot um i know a daniel in real life and literally hate his guts so the entire <laughs> book i was like that was just me i don't know if you guys do that if you like know the name of the character <laughs> the only funny. time it was weird for me was a joanna shoot with frank my uncle's name is frank and that's the only <laughs> frank i know and i'm just like it's a little weird yeah. but yeah well and then like she has the miscarriage as well yeah like, oh yeah that i was surprised by that and that it's like on page like him discovering her and stuff yeah which I thought I was that was going to become a plot of, like, because it's, like, a, I don't know if it's, like, a wives' tale. Like, it's not medically proven, but, like, the whole drinking raspberry tea when you're pregnant is not recommended. So, like, as soon as he started serving her or, like, making them have her drink raspberry tea, like, so much during the beginning of her being sick, like, I thought that was going to become a plot. Like, as soon as he did that, I was, like, is he trying to make her, like, lose what this, you know because like that's like literally a thing because like when i was pregnant which i mean it's like recommended like not to drink that until later in your pregnancy or like in big doses because it can yeah. like yeah induce labor like supposedly like it's a wives tale type of situation so i thought that was like part of the plot and then when she lost the baby i was like oh is that going to be linked to that like in the author's notes or something but like it wasn't so i don't know if she was trying to do that or what happened there <laughs> that's so interesting that went right over my head well, I yeah. saw that she kept on, like, they talked about her drinking, like, champagne and stuff. But then mm-hmm. she's like, oh, I'm not drinking because I don't feel like we are something to celebrate. And I was like, okay. But, like, then again, like, for the yeah. longest time, they didn't know that alcohol was bad for pregnancy. Yeah, so. they were, like, drinking yeah. and smoking while they smoking were Smoking, too, yeah. 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 It was interesting. There was no plotting to happen. <laughs> I just sat yeah. down at a computer and just started writing. And she's like, I want to introduce this guy and then this yeah. lady. <laughs> Which sometimes can work if something is so bonkers like Sky O'Malley. But yeah. other times it just never connects. 
and there was no just like epicness to the romance either i was like right things don't, don't belong um to. i mean beverly jenkins has yeah. loads of westerns that are amazing connie mason with her was it the alaska one that we read and really oh, yeah. liked mm-hmm. oh okay yeah yeah but she said set in a mer- oh yeah alaska. <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm gonna say get out of here <laughs> leaving my mouth i was like mm, never yeah. mind i was still thinking of the australian one we read <laughs> oh that one too connie mason's are good i need to read more of hers that's why i was like it was an american yeah yeah she lost that like ball kept rolling and she was not catching up to it yeah yeah i guess there's just like wasn't a lot going on at the time like what is there to do during the yeah, this time. Well, yeah, Lindsay has some range. that aren't terrible. Um, yeah, yeah. Dress, she has some, but that's more of like um, that's gilded, gilded age. age. Gilded age, yeah. yeah. Which I mean, it is U.S., but like it's different than like the westerns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or whenever you do like bleeding, and like it, that's more like London. Whenever like you're sick and they're like, okay, let's just draw some blood. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Connie Mason is one of those ones that has a lot of history because now I'm remembering that one. The ice where it was like during the gold rush or whatever. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. They had to go that like passage that was shut down during. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of history in her books, but it's actually interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like she throws a lot of tropes in there too, but like it makes it fun and entertaining. Like, yeah. I don't know. And it's fast paced, not. Mm-hmm. And I remember when we read the Australian one, I was like Googling stuff all the time because I was like, what does this look like? <laughs> this I was not. There was not a Google search to be found. <laughs> I do like the Lorraine Heath Western we read. The, yeah, that one was a good one. The Mail Order Bride. Yeah, I really like that. There's that another Mail so Order good. Bride series that's really good. I can't remember. Yeah. That one's more modern because one of them is Polly. Teresa Medeiros has a Western one that I want to read soon, but I haven't got to it yet. I haven't read a lot of hers. Cat Martin. We read one of them, didn't we? Yeah, I was going to say that other one. It was set in California too, right? The Midnight Rider. Oh, yeah. We, d- I, we didn't like that one. Yeah, I didn't like that one. Otherwise, it's just like, like I've read some but it's always Lorraine Heath and Beverly Jenkins that I love their western like American set ones everybody else is just kind of not there yeah I wonder do you think that is because we are American that we're just like so uninterested in our own like (laughs) I always thought American history was boring though like in all the other countries I'm like it's boring and it's sad and depressing. Yeah. yeah that's and fine. violence. So maybe that's why we can't romanticize yeah. it the same. Uh, but maybe that's why I like Gilded Age because it definitely feels like like mm-hmm. Victorian, but like a little different. Like there's more opportunity in Gilded Age than there is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still like the same kind of like societal customs. And mm-hmm. like that. So I think that's why I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I like Teresa Medeiros. I like the ones. Me too. Did. She has good ones. So that's why I hope her like Western one is good, but we'll see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I read another mail order red one that I cannot remember the name, and I don't. <laughs> it was a whole series too. Yeah, it is young yeah, too. But then even the historicals we read from like they're the same setting like they're both in the 1800s like in england too so like it's not that i don't know i guess because they've been established longer maybe so i don't know an hbo show about a western for western yeah okay for western stuff i mean for me it's just i just read beverly jenkins and learning Heath. but is beverly jenkins writing a new historical i don't know i don't, I don't think, think so, so. I thought her next like releases were a part of like her inspirational series that she writes. Yeah, her contemporaries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I've never heard of this author. I don't think she's going to a lot of book signings. So ask her. Say, girl, when's that next historical? 
True. Yeah, it is. That's a good one. That's the Lorraine Heath one. Yeah, we oh, the that. Gilded Age. It's just called Gilded Age. It's just the show on HBO. Right? Oh, yeah. I have heard. I have heard of that one. Yeah, it's good. Oh, or this? I remember that one. I have heard of this one. This one's on Apple TV, I think. Don't remember if that's isn't that like Vikings? No, this one it's kind of like following a group of girls and it's kind of like Bridgerton esque of like oh, all of them okay. trying to find suitors or something like that. Okay. And there's like a love triangle or something. Yeah. I've heard people like it. Yeah, I've heard that. Really. Me too. It seems yeah, to be like I, that. I mean, a lot of authors just said like their publishers or people that they're mm -hmm. signing with are pushing historicals the same. Yeah. Which and her sad. inspirational series does really, really well. Like a lot of people read, like the same fan base always reads that series, her contemporary ones. Hmm. What? I don't know if there's what? two. Like, as in, you're not liking Beverly Jenkins yet, or you're reading? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I didn't know Donna Fletcher had westerns. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, isn't she the one with like always those kind of like Vikingish covers? Or is that a different author? I'm thinking. I thought of? Donna Fletcher wrote Highlander romances. Oh. Let's see. Oh yeah, she did Bound to the Warrior, where they were the chain together oh, oh that's yeah. right okay, okay. Highlander ones. oh that's right i don't think i've read her before oh there's a cozy mystery author called donna fletcher no most <laughs> of these are highlander highlander yeah no such thing as a wrong <laughs> period that's i don't true. think i've read any beverly Jenkins that i haven't liked Mm -mm. I haven't read that author. I have, I think, some of their setbacks, but I've never read them. Is it was it a pirate? Was it a pirate's pleasure that we liked? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need yeah, another one. Ram. Like, I need another one where he's like super piratey and like. Yeah. yeah, it was a pirate and a pagan that we didn't like. That's mm -hmm. what I deemed. Yeah, yeah, that's what I you know that cover is so good. I mean, pirate's pleasure is the only pirate one that we've read that we did like. <laughs> All these other ones have just been not hitting it. I know. So if you guys yeah. have a good pirate recommendations, let us know. Because we've been recommending the same Gentle Rogue, Sea of Ruin, <laughs> Pirate's Pleasure. Yep, there you go. Gentle Rogue. <laughs> yep. That's like the first one everyone thinks of because it's so I good. I know Kiera mm. Andrews has one too. But that, one, that one feels like newer. Mm. Uh, the MM? Yeah. That one was really good. I like that one. Yeah, that one is a good one. But that one's not, I don't know, indie. So it just feels different. True. It feels more modern. Yeah. I know. I don't, I can't think of any like pirate ones that people recommend that aren't like the usual ones that are always heard of. Yeah, it's like the same. I used to say I love pirate romances and now I'm like, maybe I don't. Because <laughs> I read so many deaths. <laughs> but I would not consider this a pirate romance. We're just going to ignore the cover because this is not a pirate romance. No, they're on a ship for one day in the book and they literally sleep. Yeah. I think Lorraine Heath might have um, a pirate one. Sabrina Jeffries has a pirate yeah. one. Sabrina Jeffries does have a pirate one now that I'm thinking of it. I wouldn't say Lorraine Heath is like super piratey though, but I mean it is a pirate. They're on a ship, but, like, it's not giving, like, high seas adventures and, like, I think of, like, sword fighting and, <laughs> like, some crazy high seas. Yeah. 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 He was just I like, mean, yeah. Sky O'Malley had a pirate scene, but. Mm. Well, she, no, she was a whole pirate captain herself. The <laughs> queen that she is. Uh, I love that one. <laughs> ah, book was fantastic. Connie Mason, yeah. She seemed to have done, like, all the tropes. Yeah. Does she still write? I don't 
think so. I don't, I don't know. Think she's a, I feel like she's passed, but maybe I made that up. No, oh, sad. <laughs> Connie Mason. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? <laughs> I typed in Connie Mason. Apparently, she was a Playboy actress. <laughs> Not the same people, but <laughs> that was what came up. <laughs> <laughs> what a life she has lived. An American model and actress who was Playboy Magazine's Playmate of the Month in 1963. Wait, is it the same lady? No. I mean, are no, you sure? Timeline no, matches up. Is the... <laughs> <laughs> if Connie Mason was still alive, she would be like 90 something years old. What? That's what it says. Wow. Hmm. I don't think she's still alive. And I don't think she's still writing. But you're sure she's not the model? I'm pretty sure, yes. <laughs> Maybe that was her former life and then she went into writing later in life. It was her side, it was her side gift after yeah. she was I mean, she was like a real life style in Mali. So. No, this is not I'm the same person. I'm going to grab one of her books. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe I won't grab one of her books. Galen Foley has one called Pirate Prince. This says that Connie passed away on March 20th, 2020 at the age of 89. Oh. Kind of recently. So not, the same, not the same person. In her spare time, she enjoyed reading, dancing, playing bridge, and freshwater fishing. <laughs> freshwater Being fishing. A boy model. <laughs> yeah. She reminisced about her days as a model. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my lady Vixen has a lady oh, pirate. Is, she was she lived abroad a lot in Europe and Asia because mm. um, her husband was in the military. I don't know why oh, I did okay. not think she was American. Yeah, I was thinking she was like Australian, actually. Yeah. So so did I, to be honest. <laughs> Which we do have to pick our next what three books, anyways. Oh yeah. She, con uh, real quick, Connie was awarded the Career Achievement Award in the Western category by Romantic Times. Mm hmm. Interesting. A little legend. Well, she was featured on a segment of the CBS news show 48 Hours, a program devoted and the production devoted an entire program to the romance novel industry. Hmm. Like in a serious way or like I'm interested. What was that? Connie Mason. Wasn't there like another news thing done, but it was more recently of like a bunch of authors talking like that too about romance books? Yeah, and that was on like Amazon Prime, I think. Because okay. El Eloisa James was in that. And um mm -hmm. Beverly Jenkins was in that. Yeah. I've read The Pirate Lord by Sabrina Jeffries. I do like Sabrina Jeffries, but we haven't read one of her books because she published in like like the early 2000s. Mm. I saw her at a, a book signing one time and I, I own every Sabrina Jeffries books and I was just like, can you sign <laughs> all of these, man? <laughs> did she Sabrina sign them all? Yes, yeah, she did. That's awesome. They only I have yet to read the book, I think. Version of this They're good. They're good. A five minute version? Yeah, they don't have the whole thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. There's like so many that are like early 2000s that we considered reading, but. I do have mostly Cole's pirate, pirate romances. What's her pirate romances? Um, there's Captain of the Pleasures, The Price of Pleasure. Mm -hmm. I think there's one more, but I don't have it right now. Okay. I think actually that might be right next to me. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's right here. Sabrina Jeffries has a pen name, Deborah Martin. Oh, and they're written before 2000. Ooh. Interesting. And they're historical? These are the Cressley Cole ones. Oh, okay. I have. Yeah, I have seen that. Okay. This one was published 2007. So. Mm. Oh, no, 2003. This edition was 2007. That's a Connie Mason one, pirate one. I like the title. 
tempt the devil. Hmm. Interesting. All these Deborah Martin ones showing up have Sabrina Jeffries on the cover. <laughs> it literally hmm. will say Deborah Martin as Sabrina Jeffries or Sabrina Jeffries. Oh. So I'm like, what's the point of a penny? Ooh, like, right? Some of these are pretty though. There's Moonlight Enchantment by Deborah Martin. Ooh. It's a pretty cover. Oh, this was Chris Nicole's debut. Oh, that is pretty. What what? This is her debut series. Like this is Oh wow. Series. So I wonder why she had two pen names then if she just started like they're both historicals or maybe there was with different publishers. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like that's what someone said like in an interview. They had so many different pen names because they were like leaving different publishers and mm -hmm. they owned right just to that pen name. Oh, Her Deborah that. Martin was with Topaz. Oh. I don't know if she had a different publisher. The portrait by Megan Chance on New York button artist here. Hmm. Mm. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're gonna pick our next three. So if you guys have any recommendations, it does not have to be pirate. We can take a break with yeah. pirate. Like, <laughs> you don't have to read a pirate romance. <laughs> are there any like ones that are just like classics that everyone loves that we wanna read? Mm. That's true. We can read what, like Looking My Love? <laughs> no. Is that where you're going? Is that where you're going with this? <laughs> no. No, because I'm thinking like it was like Gentle Rogue, like something like that. Mm -hmm. Even though I mean I've already read that. But um anything else that like I still need to read Kingdom of Dreams. <laughs> but you guys have both read it, right? It was yeah. really good. I actually really love that one. But that's the one you like. That's the only one you like by her, right? Yeah, I gave that one five stars. I can't. I can't even <laughs> lie. I wouldn't mind doing a reread, though. Depending, like, if you guys, if a lot of you guys haven't read Kingdom of Dreams, that would be a classic to reread. True. Or, I don't think we read this one. What is the one? I don't know. Oh my gosh, let me look. I think the hero's the heroine's name is Jessica. And yeah. it's a classic uh, one. Is it Lord of Scoundrels, Scoundrels, right? Huh? Not Lord, Lord of Scoundrels. Scoundrels. Is that Loretta Chase? Yeah, but you've read it, right? Yeah, but did we read that together? No, we didn't no. read it together because I haven't read that one. It's I read so that like three good. years ago. I love Four that years book. ago. I read that a very long time ago and I don't remember it. Um, so we've read Mallard, Mallory Anderson series. We read the first book in that series. And mm -hmm. then um, somebody saying any Kathleen Witterwiss. We read two Kathleen Witterwisses already. We read Shan Shanna. And then. Oh, yeah, that is her. Mm -hmm. Was it A Flame and a Flower that we read? Or A Wolf and a Dove? One of the two. I um, think it was Flame and Flower, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've read, we've read two Amanda Quicks. Oh, but they're so good. They are so good. I would reread another one. Um, somebody asked about... I have read that one. That's the, um, like, mummy one, right? Yeah, that one's really yeah. good. That one's good. I haven't read that one. I haven't read that author, I don't think. <laughs> I mean, we could. We could pick, uh, Beverly Jenkins. We could pick Alisa Kleypas. We could pick... Yeah. Ones we know are gonna hit. <laughs> yeah, ones we know that are gonna be five stars. Can we read we an like old a classics Lisa around? <laughs> we could read an old Lisa Kleypas, but I mean, what do you guys think? Are you okay with reading a book that's kind of hard to find? That's the only thing. That's true. Well, like how, well, like, how hard old? are some of the older Lisa? Like, are there any that not aren't her four so originals, hard? right? Because those aren't even like on ebook or anything. Like those yeah, are out, right? Words. Yeah. Yeah. Because those I are. I love this right? one. This one's really good. Yeah, we could definitely read another at least Clavis for sure. Have you? Oh, yeah. Did you guys read at least Clavis or? Oh, then came you, right? Yeah. Which that was a while back. Mm hmm. We've had our book club for a very long time. That's true. <laughs> oh, Deception by Amanda Quick is supposed to be a pirate romance. I would read that for sure. Mm, is that the one? That I mean, okay. Read? So with our last couple of picks, we were picking mm. authors we haven't read from before. So if you guys are okay with us repeating authors, we will. We'll do it. 
<laughs> so I'd be up for where dreams begin. That has a four. So, oh, that was published in 2000, but I'm willing to Ooh. make an exception. Okay, cool. I've been saying, can we just extend it just a little? <laughs> Um, have you read a Gaylene Foley book? I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Okay, so Amanda Quick, um, where we'll do things begin? Me. Do we want to do Deception? I would. I would be interested in reading that, and I think you can find the audiobook for that. I'm sh pretty sure. Let's see. Okay. Because I feel like that that's another easy easy read for us Ooh, the study of ancient legends and long lost treasure okay this is the yeah. hero is a daring pirate pretending to be a teacher <laughs> okay so we're going to do that one too so deception and where dreams begin. And then mm -hmm. what's the third one that you were just saying? We add a year to the movie. <laughs> it, it would be at 2003. So we could we could read. We could read Cressley Cole. Oh, Deception has an audiobook. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Where Dreams Begin has an audiobook. Yeah. Good, good, good. Because the last couple have not, and I've had to read it with my eyes. And I was yeah. I would have honestly been so happy if this had an audio and just like popped Maybe. it on and gone about my day and instead I was even feeling more angry at it. I was like, yeah. I just sit here and read you. There's something yeah. about like, not liking a book and still having to read it physically that you're like, Ugh. At least because last time I just like too. put the audio on and I was like, whatever, just finish. I don't care yeah. about you. But yeah. we're going to have another yeah. wrap up on Instagram. <laughs> I know. Another bad one. Oh, no. We'll just put a we'll put a like a frown face. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorites. I love it. What else are we gonna read then? We have, that's two. Yeah, uh, we already read some of the Texas Destiny series by Lauren Heath. Was it, mm -hmm. was it Texas Destiny that we read? That's the one. You, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, we read that one. It was good. We all liked mm -hmm. it. Do you want to do Lord of Scoundrels? Yeah, I've never read it, so that's fine. I mean, I'd love to reread it because I think it literally has been like four or three years since I've read it. It's so iconic and good. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, cool. Lord of Scoundrels. <laughs> so we picked, we stacked those months really good for ourselves. <laughs> We're gonna need Which good. is going to be like all months. Yeah. Audio <laughs> books. That's what we need. July, August, September for these ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Lord of Scoundrels, Where Dreams Begins, and what was the third one? Deception, Deception. Deception. by Amanda Quick. Deception. By Amanda Quick. Those are our next. I don't remember okay. if I've read Galen Foley before. Mm -mm. <clears throat> but it will be a couple <laughs> months till we read those because we pick like three months ahead. So actually, what's next month's pick? The Karen portrait Rainey. by Karen Rainey, which I'm nervous for, but. <laughs> it says it's like scarred Beauty and the Beast type retelling. Yeah. You're nervous about it? Yeah, because nobody's read it. And I'm just oh. like. Well, everything it's, in the comments last time said it was like really good. It's going um, to be a hidden gem, guys. It's going to be. A I hidden. hope so. I hope because our other fan <laughs> of the opera one wasn't that good. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Prisoner of My Desire isn't that the one that Jessica hates? Do you, don't you hate that one, Jessica? No, I haven't read it. I really want to. Oh. It sounds really good. What was the Johanna Lindsay one that you like hate? The pirate one. Oh. oh, was like Pirates Captive or something like that? Or no, Pirates so. Love? It was, it had the word pirate in the title. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, it's like it red, right? <laughs> yeah, all of the on-page sex scenes were non-consensual. <laughs> and all the consensual ones were skipped over. I was like, I'm not wow. into this. A season yeah. of Risky Picks and then some classics. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to get comfortable in the next three months. We're going to say, let's pick new authors. <laughs> True. <laughs> Yeah, we've never heard of it's like you never heard of them for a reason. <laughs> oh, no. oh, this has a thousand ratings. Yeah, I hear it's like really good. A lot of people love it. Someone said they sobbed. Sobbed. 
Hey. That means I will cry. I cry for everything, though. <laughs> I was watching Legally Blonde today, and I was crying. <laughs> At which part? <laughs> this dumbest part, too. I was crying when... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when she helps her get the dog back. Oh, yeah. True. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. Do you know what made me cry yesterday? It was Abby Hitman is real. She posted. Oh, my God. About, I was like literal tears in my eyes about. Oh, my God. I saw it today and cried this morning. <laughs> what was it? I didn't um, even see it. Somebody read her book, Yours Truly, and then like was talking about it to a coworker. And then was that person told them like, oh, I know somebody who needs like a kidney transplant and like she matched with the person saves the guy's life like because of reading her book and hearing about like kidney transplants in it oh see that's yeah. like a legitimate reason to cry mine was ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just stupid. yeah yeah oh and I didn't know if you guys wanted to with and I know Samantha your answer is probably gonna be no but <laughs> With Bridgerton coming up, if we want to do like a special episode of reading, um, the their book before the book the show comes out, I'm down. I'll take, I'll take one for the show. <laughs> <laughs> you have to read the book again. I'll take one for the show. The audiobook. <laughs> that's gonna be fun because I want to reread it anyways. But yeah, is it May? Gonna, that's what I was gonna say. Is it like end of May? I mean, yeah, I'm down with that if you're okay with me just roasting Colin. <laughs> Not Colin. <laughs> guys, you guys know. It will be an interesting live show. How about that? It will be an interesting yeah. live show. Mm-hmm. We can have a pajama party and watch the first episode together. <laughs> this is the one that uh, Joanna Shoup recommended, right? Yeah. Okay. That one sounds wild. I wish we had done the one that you read, though, just for your... um. Line that, like one of your, yeah. yeah, no, 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 the no. other one, like the one you read for your historical vlog at the beginning of the year, that to have and to hold one. Oh, like for I the was... whole conversation of it, you know. Did you ever read it yet? No, I, I would still want to. Like I hated it so much, but then I'm like, but it's on purpose. So like, do I fault the book for making me feel like it, ma- it was supposed to make me feel? feel? <laughs> yeah, such an interesting one. Not like sweeping romantically, I thought it would be, but okay, it's May 19th. Yeah, so okay, we'll do a special historical. No, you I gotta stay tuned. Come on, <laughs> we're gonna find out. Colin is just a whiny rich boy, and yeah. I'm like, you're the last person that should be whining it. right now. Yeah, Fair. yeah, that's true. That. That's true. Mm-hmm. But, but we could talk about the differences, so that's true. So wait, are we gonna do the live before the show or after the show and compare? Yes, probably yeah. before. I to was thinking ready. before and like talk yeah. about like what we do can other stuff separate. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna watch the entirety in one day. So yeah, 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 true. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll plan a date and post it on our historical Hellions Instagram page. For sure. And by we, I mean. Yeah, uh, Christy will. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I got my new phone. I didn't even bother logging back in. <laughs> Christy <laughs> is uh, cleaning up our historical Hellions page. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The first part in May. The second part in June. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Right. I forgot they you... split it up like that. So That's annoying. Strange. We were talking. Yeah. We were talking about this in the group chat. That is, okay. So now we're just completely like off of this book, guys. This was not good. That's this fine. Is, yeah. Um, don't pick it up. All of the collabs that Bridgerton is doing this season. They have a coffee creamer collab. They have a rug collab, and one of the rugs is like two thousand dollars. Um. What was the other one that I was like, this is so random. Oh, I mean, I, oh Bath yeah, Bath yeah. After the scandal that Bath and Body Works had of that girl's freaking car thing exploding in her car. And she got Wait, like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know how Bath and Body Works has like the thing you put like on your. Oh, like, like the air freshener hat? thingies? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It got so hot in this woman's car that it exploded and like got into her eyes that now she has like permanent like neurological damage from the chemicals that were in the. 
car Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. So now they're collabing with Bridgerton. And now they're co- and now Bath and Body Works is collabing with Bridgerton. <laughs> so is uh, there were cookies that I sent you guys, but you were like, that oh, makes more sense. It's <laughs> just tea cookies. Um, yeah, that does. Are pretty, I will not lie. And Ruggable is actually a very nice brand. So that is fine. There um, is the tea brand that has a collab with them too, though. Which they've been doing the tea lie. ones the whole time through, right? Yeah. Like all the seasons. Yeah. The coffee creamer is not that bad. I tried the strawberry one and it wasn't that bad. But Sarah was saying, she's like, why coffee? They don't even drink coffee. <laughs> they are British. Yeah, you think it'd be like some tea, like additive. <laughs> yeah. But the, oh, the, a lot of collapse. Okay. So I'm go- next um, live show, when we do it, I'll review all, each. <laughs> <laughs> all the products. <laughs> Here's the $2,000 rug. Yeah. <laughs> the rug is pretty low. I will, I will admit. I need to look up this rug. I don't think I've seen it. Yeah. The brand is called Rug ruggable and one of them is like 2k but it's it depends on the size because you can purchase it in different oh. sizes oh yeah they are pretty but i'm Very just saying like when people talk about pr and stuff like i don't want fan art send me a rug like <laughs> i want a rug to put on my floor <laughs> yeah can we start getting some like house products please <laughs> oh no yeah yeah. But rugs are expensive, so I don't really think it's like because it's Bridgerton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah, that bath and body works. Poor girl. Poor girl. Yeah. So what else are you guys reading right now before we like end? Um, oh, I was just opening what I was reading right now. I'm doing a reread of um Rat Park by Marina Vivancos. Oh. Oh, was She's that the one you said got the paperback recently? Yes. Because all of her books were only on ebooks. So now yeah. she's releasing them in paperback. So I'm just rereading each one that she's coming out with right now. This one's really Aww. good. We're really sad. It's an age gap, like French Lovers Found Family. He um is a recovering addict. Like he grew up, his mom was an addict, and he grew up in like in a very abusive household. And he ends up getting addicted to I think it's like meth or something. Um, and mm. he, he's in a position where he's found like with a bunch of drugs. And instead of getting arrested, he gets into like a rehabilitation program and gets really close with, with like the people in that program and the family um, and has a romance with the son of that family. It's like a 10 year age gap. Oh, OK. It's really, really good, though. I did see that Nails collab because I saw Lacey had it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She unboxed it. I saw that, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's not random though, because I feel like a lot of books do like makeup and cosmetics. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Bridgerton yeah. did one with um Pat McGrath. That's yes. true for the first season, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And it was really pretty. Really expensive because it's Pat McGrath, but it, it was pretty. I forget I bought part of one thing in that collab. I was trying not to buy too mm-hmm. much. Also. Um I'm reading Wild River by Laura Pavlov right now. So Ooh, fun. Ooh. Yeah. What a pretty cover that one has. How far in are you? Oh, <laughs> I just asked how far you were. Uh, I think I'm halfway through. Oh, okay, I'm 30%. Yeah, yeah, I only have three hours left. So, oh, oh, nice. yeah, nice. <gasps> Somebody's reading Mixed Signal by BK Bars. And yes, I have a tattoo. You can't see it, but it's on my arm, baby. I love that book. <laughs> I can't I wait for the new book. book. I know. Some people already freaking got their arcs for it and stuff. And I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. For being a Morrison? Yeah. Funny feeling. She released like yeah. arcs on NetGalley. Not NetGalley. I don't know if it was early. Maybe beta readers. Maybe it wasn't arcs. I was like, I don't think I've seen anybody reading it. No, but it oh, wouldn't be beta readers readers because it's if she has the paperback. Yeah. I, was, I know she got like physical arcs. Did she like send them out to maybe like people she knows or something? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw people reading it already. Hmm. Anyways, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What did you say you were reading, Christy? Are you also reading Laura Pavlov? Yeah, the same thing, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Wild one. River. I actually thought River was going to be the heroine for some reason. I forgot that was the guy's name in their, like, friend group. Yeah. Are you liking it? Yeah. As much as you're reading, like- reading Laura Pavlov right now. Yeah, they are. Hmm. I love that one. Did you guys see the Chestnut Springs um, editions that Dark and Quirky is doing? 
Yeah, they're finishing the. Huh? Did you buy them? I bought two of them. So I, I get what they're doing, but like I have, and it's just frustrating because I have the one from the original box, right? So it's the normal cover hardback with the um, metallic sprayed edges, Mm -hmm. but now they have a set that's and bought like foiled and it has a scene on the spines like the the pages and yeah. end pages and pages mm-hmm. but i'd have to get a new copy of was it flawless that it is heartless whichever one they've already done yeah heartless yeah heartless or if i just want to match one i have then i get the other editions with the yeah. other edges and i'm like oh, but i like i obviously would want the other ones but then what do i do with the one i already have I know. I kind of wish they didn't do that whole like collector's edition, like with all the extras and stuff. Yeah. But like, I mean, yeah, because then you'd be with the other one. Yeah. I ended up just getting, I think, the next two books. So what, like Reckless and what's the other one? What's one? Powerless. Okay. Yeah. But I also have a lot of copies of them. That's why I just stuck with like those three are like my favorites so i'm like i don't need the first and the last like i need to keep it kind of simple. well i mean it is 40 dollars a book which is what everyone's mm-hmm. selling special editions for it's mm-hmm. just like when you buy it all together 200 dollars is a lot yeah but, but i mean it's it's equivalent to the bookish box pricing and like yeah. eternal numbers pricing so it's not overpriced it for the market but yeah. it is generally it's a lot to pay at once so i was yeah. like tempted to get the whole set but i'm also like okay i already have three copies of those books and more of individual books so yeah yeah that's why like the individuals are just 35 each i like that they give the option for individuals like i know eternal embers mm-hmm. like i love larry's collab but i realistically only want one of the books yeah. so are you gonna get it christy because i have to remember to go to their table at sweetgrass to order early yeah i am okay yeah. I am. It's a good collab. That collab is really pretty. I like all the books. Yeah, I think I like all the books in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't read the, like, um, whatever the ones Tori loves, like the, the like, Chloe Walsh. Chloe yeah. Walsh. Yeah. I haven't read those yet, but, like, I might eventually, so. And the covers are just really pretty, so. Yeah, they're really Yeah, nice. we're reading arcs of it, so it comes out March 28th. But in general, book boxes also stress me out, guys. It's fine. It's very expensive. <laughs> well, because I just bought the Liz Tom Ford cover to cover books. Oh, yeah. you did? And then, yeah, because I was like, I'm probably going to regret not getting it. And yeah. then I bought Abby Jimenez off of someone. And then I bought the Elizabeth uh-huh. O'Rourke Eternal Embers from someone. And so I'm just like. Yeah. Oh. And I told myself I wasn't going to buy a lot of special editions this year because I don't really have like the space or the money no. <laughs> but i bought the bride special edition <laughs> i got that one <laughs> that because is if you pretty don't get it, you're never gonna get it or you're gonna pay like triple the price yeah, yeah. and it sold out so like you'd want to have it <laughs> yeah did yeah. you see the fake mate one um jessica i got that one. Oh, yeah that one is that was from so fairy loop pretty. though right yeah fairy loop that one's really pretty okay no I have an Afterlight subscription, so that's the only one I really pay attention to. Mm. They are never ending, Monica. I feel like they're, there's even more of them. Well, like last year, they're starting to get more and more and more, like new ones popping up. And I bought the Whispers review from Novel Grounds. I'm like, literally, it's like every week there's at least one. I'm like, oh, I want that. But I'm like, it's yeah. so much. I think it's easy to get swept into like the hype and just like FOMO, especially because you're like, oh, like what if... I do want yeah. this, like, even if I haven't read this book, what if I read it and I love it? So I think I'm just trying to be a little bit more picky on, like, no, I'm only getting special pre- editions for ones that I mm-hmm. actually love, not just because they're pretty. But yeah. what if you I started being picky this year. <laughs> I know, does <just>, stop. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but my problem is they have been stuff that I love. Like, the Elizabeth yeah. the Rip one was, like, one of my favorite books of the year, and I'm like, well, I have to get that one. And then, yeah. like, I love the Liz Tom Ford series. Yeah. That's true. I don't read a lot of contemporary books, so a lot of the ones that come out, like, I haven't even read the Chestnut Spring series. So I saw that, and I was like, oh, that's cute. Keep scrolling. <laughs> My dog can't decide if he wants to be in or out. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I think we are good for tonight, then. So thank yeah. you, everybody, for joining us, even if you didn't... Oh, what's the strong book? Even if you didn't read this one, <laughs> the chat was interesting. <laughs> Yes, love talking to you guys. So we'll um, yeah, I'm, I'm just 
Um, <laughs> we'll announce our next live show on the Historic Hellions page, and then also when we're going to be rereading the Bridgerton book, Collins book. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, and good night. Bye. Bye.